we're going to cover mathematical modeling for chemical process control. Different types of math mathematical models that you can have, uh, first being first principles, so purely from fundamentals that you build up as a system of equations to describe uh, input-output relationships. Next one is going to be empirical. Now that's purely from data. Uh, all of the modeling uh, is unstructured, uh, most likely, and you're determining the form of the model from the data. Uh, you can also have a mixture of the two, uh, first principles and empirical. Okay, so first principles uh, we know from example, uh, for example, like reactor uh, equations, uh, empirical, we've covered first order plus dead time. You could have state space, uh, finite impulse response models, neural networks. Uh, there's a variety. There are a variety of linear and nonlinear options for empirical models. Uh, the mixture of the two, um, those may be derived. The form of the model may be derived from first principles, uh, but then you may have unknown parameters that are fit with data. Okay, so this lecture focuses on mathematical models based on first principles with either known or unknown um, or estimated parameters. Okay, so we're going to first of all just cover the conservation principle, which is uh, accumulation terms um, equals flow into the system in a certain time period, uh, flow out of the system, and then the amount generated uh, and then uh, subtracted, uh, you know, the amount consumed. So anything that uh, causes, you know, I like to think about a balloon in this case, okay? So if I have a balloon, anything that I'm putting into the system or generating inside the system, that's going to have a positive sign there. Okay, so generated or in, uh, anything that is leaving the balloon, let's say air is leaving the balloon, is coming out, or I have some consumption um, a reaction going on to, to take away moles of air, then I am going to uh, have the negative signs associated with that. So accumulation equals anything that's going to make the balloon larger is going to have a positive sign. Anything that's going to make it uh, smaller is going to have a negative sign. But in this case, uh, you know, you can do these balances on total mass, mass of individual species, energy, or momentum, okay, or number of, uh, of individual species as well. Okay, so you have the accumulation equals in minus out plus generation minus consumption. Okay, so here, uh, for example, is a, is a mass balance, okay? So we have dm dt equals the total sum of all mass coming in and the mass uh, going out. We generally don't put the uh, generation consumption terms uh, unless you're dealing with nuclear systems. We typically uh, say that mass is uh, conserved. Okay, so um, that is our first one. We ha also have species mole balances. Okay, in this case, uh, the accumulation is a species A, and then you may have a species A coming in and leaving. That's just a concentration times a volumetric flow rate. And then you may have a reaction uh, rate times a volume as well. Okay, so that would be like a uh, consumption or generation term right there. Okay, now ener energy balance is a little bit more uh, challenging. You have, um, you know, the total uh, energy uh, with respect to time, um, and then you have the inlet streams, the outlet streams. Uh, you have heat put into the system, and then also work put into the system as well. Okay, so um, in in uh, in this one, uh, this is the mass uh, sub i. That's the mass flow rate of stream i coming into the system. And, and some of this notation um, you know, is covered in the textbook if you need additional explanation on the, on the different symbols for these. Okay, um, here's just a little extra. Uh, C sub A is moles of A per volume, and then Q is the volumetric flow of stream I. Okay, and then H sub I is the enthalpy per unit mass of stream I. Okay, so there's different, there are different forms of the energy balance. Uh, you know, we're going to typically simplify things quite a bit. Um, you know, we're going to have uh, neglect the potential and kinetic energy terms. Uh, typically, with with our systems, those are typically uh, less significant for uh, chemical process control. Um, and then also, um, you know, for liquid systems, the internal energy is approximately equal to the uh, to the enthalpy. Okay, and then we have in terms of temperature. If we relate the enthalpy in terms of temperature, uh, we get this form of the equation. We're not going to be using 
the momentum equation in this class. Okay, so to develop a transient model, you want to go through these uh, nine steps. First of all, you want to identify an objective uh, for your modeling. Um, the second uh, you know, is, to, is to go ahead and draw a schematic diagram. Okay, um, you want to label all the process variables. Uh, you also want to list all assumptions. These these three are, um, you know, these first three things are often passed over, but they're very critical to the development of these these transient models. Um, the spatial dependence is the fourth one. Um, you know that is, if you have concentrations or temperatures that are different at different uh, locations, like let's say in a vessel, uh, typically we. Um, you know, we're going to start with no that's well mixed or, uh, you know, it's not a plug flow reactor. Okay, so plug flow reactors, you might need a PDE to describe that. You have concentration or temperature dependence along the reactor. Uh, CSTR, okay, that's going to be a uh, continuously stirred tank reactor. Uh, that's going to be well mixed, and so it might be an ODE that you can use. Okay, so P, uh, plug flow reactor might be a PDE. Okay, and then uh, dynamic balance. Uh, you write your mass, species, and energy balances. And then you also include any other relationships that you need, like thermal reactions, geometry. The next one is you want to determine um, degrees of freedom. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have the same number of variables as equations. Now, for simulation, this is going to be important. You want the number of variables equal to the number of equations. And um, you know the reason why that's important is because uh, you're going to have the same number of unknowns as you have equations. If you have m more variables, then it's underspecified. If you have uh, too few variables, then it's um, uh, so it's overspecified. Overspecified if you have too few uh, uh, variables. So things that can the equations need to be solved to find those variables. Okay. Then we uh, finally we want to simplify and then also classify other inputs as disturbances or manipulated variables for our system. Okay, now we're going to go into a pool with a leak. Um, we have a leak coming out of our pool and uh, we also have city supply coming in. Uh, we also have a temperature, uh, we can adjust the temperature with this heat input and we have a temperature sensor, a temperature controller that then has gas coming into this furnace. Okay, and you also have a level transmittal emitter and a level controller. So we have two controllers here, one maintaining level, one maintaining temperature. Okay, so first of all we're going to start with a dynamic energy balance. Accumulation equals in minus out plus generation minus consumption. Okay, so I just wrote my energy balance here. Okay, so that's my energy balance in terms of enthalpy. And uh, then I'm going to relate it in terms of temperature. And uh, come up with, uh, you know, expanded form of my energy balance equation. So I'm going to assume that you know if I have good level control here, just for the energy balance case, that this is going to equal zero, the change in mass with respect to time. That's going to be equal zero, and that'll help me simplify. Okay, and then I can relate this to a first order plus dead time model, just by assuming I got to make a couple other assumptions here. Um, you know, just that the atmospheric temperature equals a pool temperature, and the ground temperature equals a pool temperature. So. I've eliminated a couple other terms just for simplification there uh, to get my Q versus um, temperature of the pool relationships. I don't have to neglect those if I want to get other FOPDT models with respect to ambient and ground temperatures. Okay, I'm going to fit it into this first order plus dead time model form and uh, just rearrange the equation. Okay, so this becomes my tau P and this uh, this this uh, bottom term here uh, that becomes my one over uh, that's that's going to be kp okay so one divided by fw rho c okay so that's going to be equal kp and then I have theta p equals zero okay so I came up with the first order plus dead time equation from this fundamental model.